Welcome friends, welcome to yet another session on hedge accounting and in this session we are going to cover what are qualifying hedged items and what are qualifying hedging instruments. So let's begin. Guys, in the previous video on the hedge accounting part 1, we have already covered what is hedging, why we use hedge accounting, objective of hedge accounting and the criteria for hedging relationship. And in this video, we are going to discuss what are qualifying hedged items and in the subsequent slides, we are going to discuss what are qualifying hedged instruments. So let us first discuss what are qualifying hedged items. Index 109 has given a list of qualifying hedged items. What are those qualifying hedged items? Number one, a recognized asset or a recognized liability can be an hedged item. Number two, in days 109 says an unrecognized firm commitment can be my eligible hedged item. So before we move ahead, let us first discuss what exactly is an unrecognized firm commitment. Let's say an entity has entered into a contract for sale of goods at a future date. Because it has already entered into a contract for the sale of goods, it's a firm commitment. Entity is fully committed to do a transaction of sale of goods at a future date. And why this firm commitment is called unrecognized firm commitment? Because it is yet to be recognized in my books of accounts. So an unrecognized firm commitment is my eligible hedged item as per India's 109. A highly probable forecast transaction can also be a hedged item. So now the question arises is what exactly is the difference between a highly probable forecast transaction because it's a forecast transaction and an unrecognized firm commitment because the transaction will happen at a future date. So the difference is in case of unrecognized firm commitment, an entity has already entered into a contract for the sale of goods. However, in case of a highly probable forecast transaction, it has not entered into a sale of goods contract. However, the forecast transaction is very likely to happen or it is highly probable that a focus transaction will happen. Indias 109 also says that a net investment in a foreign operation it can also be my hedged item. An entity may have a subsidiary associate or a joint venture in a foreign country. I should say it's a foreign operation. So a net investment in a foreign operation can also be a hedged item. So we'll be discussing about net investment in the foreign operation in the in another video which we will which we will upload soon and we will discuss about it in that video. So in days 109 also says that a hedged item can be a single item or a group of items. In days 109 also says that a hedge item can also be a component of such items or a group of items. So let us understand what exactly can is a component as defined in 109. So in days 109 says that an entity may designate only the following type of components as hedged items. So in days 109 has given a list of the components that can be designated as hedged items. So there are three such components. Number one, only changes in the cash flows or the fair value of an item attributable to a specific rate can be my component of which can be designated as hedged items. So let say there are specific risks associated to an entity or to a particular item. Index 109 says that you can designate changes in cash flows as your component which can be designated as an hedged item or the fair value for fair value changes of an item can also be designated as hedged item. It is not necessary that all risk has to be hedged. A specific risk or risk can be hedged. Changes in cash flows can be hedged or the changes in fair value of an item can be hedged. Index 109 also says that one or more selected contractual for, uh, cash flows can be my component which can be designated as hedged items. So let's say a uh, transaction has cash flows which includes principal cash flows as well as interest cash flows. So in days 109 says that only interest cash flows that is part of the total cash flows or components of the total cash flows can be designated as the hedged item. It is not necessary that the, all the cash flows has to be designated as the hedged item. 
a part or a component of cash flows in this example interest cash flows can be designated as hedged component in this 109 says that components of nominal amount can be my hedged item what is a component of a nominal amount for example if the hedged item say is 100 crore a portion of the entire loan say 70% may be designated as the hedged item so out of the total loan of 100 crores 70 crores can be designated as hedged item so friend let us discuss what are qualifying hedging instruments so in days 109 has given us a list of qualifying hedging instruments so let us discuss what are these hedging instruments first a derivative measured at fair value through profit and loss so guys what is a derivative we, derivative we have already covered this in the videos uploaded earlier on derivatives in the first video we discussed about forward contract and the futures contract and in the second video we discuss about the options and the swap contracts and also in another video we have discussed how the uh, financial assets and liabilities will be classified a financial asset and liability may be classified as fair value through profit and loss account so we are not going to discuss more about that because we have already discussed in that video for the purpose of this session a derivative measured at fair value through pnl can be my qualifying hedging instruments in days 109 says there are some exception to it there is one exception to it that is some written options cannot be a qualifying hedging instruments in days 109 also says that a non derivative financial asset or a non derivative financial liability measured at fair value through pnl can may be designated as my hedging instrument unless it is a financial liability designated as at fair value through pnl for which the amount of its change in fair value that is attributable to changes in the credit risk of that liability is presented in oci what is oci other comprehensive income that also we have discussed in the earlier video so we are not going to discuss about that here so a derivative financial asset or a non derivative financial liability measured at fair value through pnl may be designated as qualifying hedging instruments there is an exception that it is unless it is a financial liability designated as at fair value through pnl for which the amount of its change in fair value is presented in other comprehensive income so as far as a hedge of a foreign currency risk is concerned the foreign currency risk component of a non derivative financial asset or a non derivative financial liability may be designated as hedging instrument provided that it is not an investment in an equity instrument for which an entity has elected to present the changes in fair value in oci so in short a non derivative financial asset or a non derivative financial liability measured at fair value through pnl can be designated as a hedging instrument unless and until the amount of its change in fair value is presented in oci in case of a foreign currency risk the foreign currency risk component of a non derivative financial asset or a non derivative financial liability may be designated as hedging instrument unless it is an investment in equity instrument for which the entity has elected to present the changes in fair value in other comprehensive income so indes 109 also says that for hedge accounting purposes only contracts with a party external to the reporting entity if there is a party external to the reporting entity only those contracts can be designated as hedging instruments so guys a question comes that just like there can be a component which can be designated as an hedged item can a component of a hedging instrument be designated as a hedging instrument so in days 109 says a qualifying instrument must be designated in its entirety as a hedging instrument however in days 109 has given three exceptions wherein a component can also be a hedging instrument so let us have a look at those components so number 1 in case of an option contract uh, we have already know that there is an intrinsic value and there is a time value of an option contract so in days 109 says that an entity 
can designate as a hedging instrument only the change in the intrinsic value of an option as a designated hedging instrument and not the time value of a portion. Similarly, in case of a forward contract, there is a forward element and the spot element. So, India S109 says that you can separate the forward element and the spot element of a forward contract and designate it as a hedging instrument only the change in the value of spot element that is only the change in the value of a spot element can be designated as an hedging instrument and not the forward element. A third exception which has been defined by index 109 is a proportion of the entire hedging instrument such as 50% of the nominal amount may be designated as the hedging instrument. So guys let us just have a quick recap of what we have already discussed. This item can be a recognized asset or a liability, an unrecognized firm commitment, a highly probable forecast transaction and a net investment in a foreign operation. As the item can be a single item or a group of items and it can also be a component of such single item or a group of items. Index 109 says that the only following types of components can be designated as an hedge items. Number one, changes in either cash flows or the changes in fair value of an item can be designated as a hedge item. Index 109 also says one or more of the contractual cash flows can be designated as a hedging as a hedge item. Index 109 says component of a nominal item that is a specified portion of the amount of an item can be designated as a hedge item. What are can be my qualifying hedging instruments? A derivative measured at fair value through PNL and a non-derivative financial asset or a non-derivative financial liability measured at fair value through PNL. And then there is an exception where the amount of change in fair value is presented in other comprehensive income. In case of a hedge of a foreign currency risk, the foreign currency component of a non-derivative financial asset or a non-derivative financial liability may be designated as a hedging instrument provided as it is not an investment in an equity instrument for which entity is elected to present the changes in other comprehensive income. Only contracts with a party external to a reporting entity can be my hedging instruments, can be designated as an hedging instruments. There are three exceptions uh, to what in India says that a qualifying instrument must be designated in its entirety as a hedging instrument. First one means separating the instancing and the time value of the option contract and designated only the change in the intrinsic value of an option as a hedging instrument and not the changes in its time value. In case of forward contract, only the change in the value of the spot element can be designated as a hedging instrument and not the forward element. And third, in say, uh, 109 says a proportion of the entire hedging instrument such as 50% of the nominal amount may be designated as a hedging instrument. So uh, guys, in this video, we have discussed about the hedged items as well as hedging instruments. We will be uploading more videos on hedging uh, account, hedge accounting. So stay tuned.